So before we go to the topic of motion ratio, it's very important for us to know what is a roll and pitch angle. So if you can as we see in this image, so you have three axes, X, Y and Z axis. And you also have the rotation along each of these axes, right? So if the car tends to rotate along the X axis, right? If, if it actually kind of moves from right to left, this is called it as roll angle. Okay, so this movement from right to left of the body, that's called as a roll angle. Okay. And if it actually rotates along the Y axis, right? Like if it moves from back to forth, this angle, when your body moves, that's a pitch angle. Okay. And if it actually rotates along a vertical axis, wherein the front side moves uh, right and left a little bit, that's called as a yaw angle. Okay, so again, I repeat, the roll angle is going to be the motion of your car from right to left. And the, the, your pitch angle is going to be the angle which your car body moves from front to rear. Okay, This bouncing motion from right or front to rear, that's a pitch angle. And your angle, it's not that important in a normal passenger car, although you would actually face some kind of a yaw movement in a high speed supercar or even a formula car. But uh, usually for a normal passenger car or for a competition level car, you wouldn't need to consider the yaw angle. But it's important for us to know what a yaw angle is, but there is nothing much that, uh, for us to calculate the yaw angle during the initial stages. Okay. So now once we have learned what a roll and pitch angle is, let's go to the motion ratio. Okay. So motion ratio is nothing but how much your spring compresses for each millimeter of your spindle movement okay so if this is your if there is a wheel here and if it actually goes along a speed breaker so every one millimeter of your wheel movement in the upward direction how much of the compression is there on the spring okay so that is the motion ratio so motion ratio is usually it's denoted as how much is the delta spring length which is the change in the spring if it compresses then how much is the compression so that's a delta that we are looking for upon for every one millimeter of your wheel movement so if the wheel moves by one millimeter and if your spring compresses by 0.7 millimeter then your spring ratio is nothing but 0.7 but there is another way of actually finding the motion ratio which is you divide the distance from the pivot point whatever the length along which your uh, spring is attached that distance upon the entire wheel center okay, what that distance is you divide d1 by d2 to get the motion ratio as well well 